This is Tammy Grimes inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Radio you. Mystery Theater presents... a hundred tongues, a hundred mouths, and a voice of iron, I could not sum up all the forms of crime. Those words were written almost 2,000 years ago by the Roman poet Virgil. Today we are concerned with what motivates an offense against society as much as we are with the form that that wrongdoing takes. Environment, heredity, obscure psychological reasons, what forces are at work, we want to know, behind an act of arson, burglary, assault, and especially of murder. No, Hector, you don't dare move, for I am the master, you the slave. What are you going to do? No, don't come near me. The time for sacrifice has come, you fool. Stay away from me. No, don't take your hands from my throat. Don Luis! Don't call me Don Luis, you idiot. Linka. I am Linka, high priest of the ancient Chipchas. And this should shut that imbecilic mouth of yours forever. <laughs> mystery drama, A Pair of Green Eyes, was especially written for the Mystery Theater by Arnold Moss and stars Terry Keane. I'll be back in a moment with Act One. Exploring the cultures of primitive societies has always intrigued the traveler. What sort of life did these people live? These people of a long-forgotten past. Shep Lawson, a dealer in antiquities, is fascinated by the discovery of the traces of a tribe of Indians that once lived on an island off the northern coast of South America. Accompanied by his wife, Lily, he is being shown through the island's small museum by Don Luis Herrera, deputy curator of National Antiquities. And here, Senor Lawson, Senora, you see the remains of a wooden plow. The Chibcha Indians were noted for their agricultural skills. As well as for their skill in mining emeralds? Emeralds? Oh, of course. Like that absolutely brilliant one you have hanging from your neck. Uh, that was given to me by my grandfather, a high priest of the Chipchas. It was given to him by his grandfather. Well, isn't that dangerous? Walking about with such a valuable stone for everyone to see? Uh, it is protected by our ancient gods. At least that is what our people here believe. And now I call your attention to the pottery here on this table. Oh, the clay ones are so beautifully decorated. They were used for carrying water, Signora. And these, uh, over here, in this glass case? Well, those are examples of the Chipcha's great skill in weaving. Unfortunately, some of the material has yielded to the ravages of time. Uh, I understand, Don Luis, that their religious ceremonies may have included human sacrifice. Uh, have we any evidence to support that? Uh, I'm afraid there is. We know, for example, that the ruler of the tribe was once a year completely covered from head to toe with gold dust. Gold dust? Which he then washed off his body in the lake you saw this morning. It is why we call it Lago Sagrado, the sacred lake. At about that same time, sacrifices... Uh, human sacrifices were made to the gods. And, uh, and here, Senor Lawson, Senor, behind this glass case, are some of those gods. Oh, my, they're frightening. They look so evil. 
And each one different from the others. Oh, they are different. As you see, some are fashioned from clay, others from wood, still others cast in metal, mostly copper, ornamented with gold. And you are correct, Senora Lawson. They, they appear to be evil because they are evil. Uh, tell me something, Don Luis. Senor Lawson. Each one of these figures, these gods of the Chipchas, they're all of them, as my wife has just said, different one from the other, yet they all seem to have one thing in common. I think you speak, Senor, of the eyes. Exactly. There are no eyes in any of them. Yes, only the naked eye sockets, as if they're gods... Evil or not, were all of them blind. I can understand that it should make you to ask. As if in some way, by having their eyes removed, they have been forcibly blinded. All except the three little statues, Shep, that you... Three little statues, Senora? Or these uh, little statues we saw when we were down at the excavation site. They, uh, they were different, huh? In uh, what way, Senora? Watch out, Lily. What are you doing? Oh, Lily. Sorry. How stupid. How awkward can you be? You knocked over one of those priceless pieces of pottery right off the table. It smashed into a hundred pieces. Right. I oh, it's not of too much harm, Senora. Why don't you get your clumsy feet out of here before you do any and more damage? And why don't you just shut up? I will no longer be humiliated by you, Shep. You've been doing it all your life. I said get out. Do you understand? Out! Please, senor, senora. Shep, you better calm down or you'll work yourself into another heart attack. You know, like the last one? You'd love that, wouldn't you? What was broken, senor, is not so important. Shep, someday I'm going to kill you for the way you talk to me. I'm going back to the hotel. Goodbye. <clears throat> uh, senor Herrera... I'll do whatever must be done to make up for what my wife has broken. Oh, there's nothing to do, senor. After all, it was an accident. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, let's see now. Uh, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, we were talking about these gods with no eyes. Uh, is there any explanation? So far, there is no answer. None at all. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Lawson, uh, your bait's on the hook? Just as you showed me, says I. See? Ah, well done. The Marlin love flying fish. Best bait in the world for Marlin. Uh, okay, now let your, let your line out. How far, says I? Oh, 100 yards, 150. Uh, just keep it a fair distance away from the boat. Here goes. Mrs. Lawson, uh, you're sure you don't want to try? Oh, no, thank you, Cesar. I'll watch. What else is there to do while the great man fishes? <laughs> you can talk to me, Senor Lawson, if you like. It's Lily. And I'd love to, Cesar. Tell me, what's a handsome, young, educated fellow like you doing down here captaining a fishing boat? In the first place, it's a living. But then, as I told you, this is home. My father was an American. I'm an American. I went to school in the States. But my roots are here in this country with my mother's people. This is where I belong. Uh, uh, let, let out your line some more, Mr. Lawson. Whatever you say, Cesar. You're the captain. <laughs> You're not married? Oh, no, I'm not married. You must have dozens of girlfriends. Dozens? Actually, I have almost none. Too busy. How is that? Yeah, I'm working on a book. And the boat keeps me in food while I write. Oh, what kind of book? Folk tales of the Chibcha Indians. And what do you do with your time, Cesar, when you're not writing or on your boat? <laughs> with a boat like this, there are always things to do. I can imagine... My husband is going down to the excavation site tomorrow. And without me, he'll be gone all day. Would you, by any chance, be free, says I? Unfortunately, no one has chartered either my boat or me for tomorrow. No one? No one. Well, 
Maybe in that case, you and I could spend part of the day together. I'm sure there are lots of things we could do. Sit down! Come quick! I've got something on my mind! Something big! It's pulling me out of the chair! Oh, what? You certainly have got something. Uh, now, uh, give him line. Uh, yep, more. Uh, more! All you've got! But I can't hold him, Cesar! He's too much for me. He, he's beginning to die at the bottom out. Now, hold on to him, Mr. Lawson. Hold on! You take the rod, Cesar! What's wrong, Mr. Lawson? Yeah. Yeah. What's the matter? The pain, Lily. Do you hear it? My chest, I can't bear the pain. So, like, like the last time, Lily. Give me a couple of the nitroglycerin pills. There, in my kit. Let me help. Just a minute. I, I, I can't seem to find them. Oh, well, here they are, Chef. Put them in my mouth, Lily. Hurry. Oh, oh no. Oh, that wave that threw me off balance. The pills, Lily. The pills. There are no pills. The boat lurched. The pills fell overboard. Into the water. You dropped them, Lily. Into the water. I saw you. They did not fall. In that case, there isn't much to be done. Is there? You said you wanted to kill me. Mr. Lawson. Mr. Lawson. He's dead. Cesar? Yes, Lily. You saw what happened. Turn the boat around. Let's get the body back to shore. What can I say, Senora Lawson? I grieve with you over your husband's untimely death. He will be missed by all of us. Oh, thank you, Don Luis. You're very thoughtful. Allow me to present our mortician, the undertaker of our island, Hector Camacho. My heartfelt condolence, senor. I'm very sorry indeed. Hector and I will see to all the details of your husband's remains. You need have no concern, senora. You are most considerate, both of you. The young boat captain says I'll wait for you outside to escort you to the hotel. And in the morning, he will take you and the body of Senor Lawson in his boat to the mainland. Tomorrow. In time to catch the plane back to the States. It is not possible, Don Luis. What is not possible? It is not possible to have the body ready for transportation. Why not? I do my job, but uh, the Louis to have proper death certificate, we must wait for the inquest of the coroner, Jose Lopez. So? But you know, say your Lopez comes to the island only once a week on the Tuesday morning boat. Pay no attention to this idiot, Senora Lawson. What must be done will be done. I will see to it. Everything. Uh, thank you. I will take care of the casket, Senora. I spare you that trouble in your grief. Goodbye. And you've been very kind, Don Luis. Hector, bring in the casket for the body. But don't stand there with your mouth open. Move. Which casket? Idiot. You know very well which casket. Don Luis. No. I cannot. I refuse. I leave you now. Where do you think you're going? To the municipal palace. Indeed. I will speak with the mayor of the island. The mayor? Why so? I will tell him that you are not a man of honor, Don Luis. That you betray our country. You will do that, Hector. I will also tell him that I do not wish any longer to be part of this filthy business. But you are part of it, my soft-headed friend. No longer, Don Luis. I will tell all to the mayor. I don't think you will, Hector. You forget. I am the master. You, the slave. What are you going to do? No. Don't come near me. You will not go any place, you fool. What are you saying? No. Stay away from me. Get your hands 
from my throat, Don Luis. Don't call me Don Luis, you idiot. Linka. I am Linka, high priest of the Kipchas. Oh, Aaron, I wanted to ask. Oh. Hey, Tayo, hey, Tayo, get wa, hey, Tayo. And this, this Hector should shut that imbecilic mouth of yours. <laughs> We have seen two men die. One indirectly at the hands of his wife. The other throttled in cold blood by a man who seems to think he is someone from a strange and ancient past. The outcome? I'll be back in a moment with Act Two. A sleepy little island off the coast of South America basking in the blaze of a tropical sun. One day it comes abruptly to life when it is discovered as the locale of a tribe of ancient Indians, the Chipchas. The people skilled in many things, including the mining of precious emeralds. But above all, the people with a strange history that includes the ritual of human sacrifice. Lily Lawson, accompanied by Cesar, the young boat captain, has brought the body of her husband to the mainland and is passing through customs. And now, senora, your passport, please. Here you are. Mrs. Lily Lawson, citizen of the United States. That's right. And you are accompanied by... The uh, senora's husband died on the island. She's taking his remains, that uh, casket there, back to the States for burial. I'm helping her. I see. Uh, Cesar here has all the necessary papers. Here they are, sir. Uh-huh. Mr. Shepard Lawson, citizen of USA. Mm-hmm. The papers seem to be in order. The date is of yesterday. The legal certificate of death properly signed by Jose Lopez, medical examiner. So what is the next step, sir? Uh, you must to forgive me, senor. I apologize to you, but the casket of your husband must be opened. No. I am uh, deeply sorry, yes. It is most unpleasant, but there is a reason. What reason could there possibly be? I will explain to you in a moment. Roberto, uh, please to take the lid of the casket. You see, senora, there has been a certain amount of uh, smuggling, especially in the past few weeks. Smuggling? Of what? Well, since the discovery of the Chipcha Indian archaeological site, uh, many priceless artifacts, all of them belonging to the state, have disappeared out of the country. And uh, hiding them in a casket along with a dead body seems to be one of the favorite ways. So we must be especially careful. Ah, Roberto, very good. Uh, we take a look, all right? The cover is off the coffin. Oh, so distasteful. Now, it'll be over in a minute. Uh, will you be so good, senora, to identify the corpse of your husband? If I must. On this side, please, senora. No, it can't be. Well, what right. is it? What's wrong, Lily? Really? Look. Look into the casket. That's not my husband. Oh, it's the body of the island's little undertaker, Hector Camacho. <laughs> poor, poor little Hector. Who will not grieve for the passing of this so innocent little man? Who indeed? Don Luis... We are shocked, of course, about Hector's sudden death. As is the whole island, the great people. But I am more disturbed and distressed about the disappearance of my husband's body. I assure you I will do all in my power to solve that mystery. What happened to my husband's body? Who is to say, senora? I have no more idea at this moment than you. But I promise you I shall do my best to find out. And uh, while you're at it, Don Luis, you might try to discover how a death certificate for Mr. Lawson could have been signed by the coroner, Jose Lopez. I don't understand. The certificate. We saw it at customs. It was dated yesterday. 
And Senor Lopez, as we all know, was at his office on the mainland all day yesterday. Hmm. That is indeed most curious, Cesar. I shall investigate that, too. If you gentlemen will forgive me, I think I'm going for a swim to clear my head. Uh, I envy you, senora. A pleasure that is denied me. Somehow, even as a boy, I never learned to swim well. Cesar, would you care to come with me? Love to. Then when I come back, Don Luis, you will do your best, I'm sure, to have some answers to our questions. <laughs> Lily, you could be back home again by tomorrow night if you really wanted to. I know, but I couldn't possibly leave here until I find out what's happened to Shep's body. It's that important to you? I don't know why, but I think so. Well, you'll have your hands full once you get home. There'll be a lot to do just settling the state. Oh, Cesar, I can't tell you how much of a comfort you've been. With, well, with everything. I'll miss you. Thank you, Lily. I wish I could persuade you to come back to the States permanently. Man, I told you, my place is here. With your people. Yes, I know. Oh, look. Over there, a big log at the water's edge, washed in by the tide. Can, can we sit for a couple of minutes? No, there's no shade. The sun is hot. Well, just for a couple of minutes. You know, that sun can be very treacherous. Mm. Yes, I better put on some suntan cream. Even with this big straw hat, the sun finds me. Uh, well, where do you keep it? It's in my shoulder bag. I'll get it for you. Oh, no, says I. Uh, just uh, hand me the bag. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How many tubes of that stuff do you carry? You must have half a dozen of them in there. With skin like mine, I always carry a good supply with me. My favorite brand. Uh, really? What? Out there in the water. What is it? It looks like a body. A dead body floating in towards shore. There. There, that wave brought it much closer. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. That body, that's... Shep. That's the body of my husband. I am so relieved for you, Senora Lawson. Relieved... That the body of your husband has been found. But... Relieved that the sea has returned his body. I am certainly not very relieved about how it was returned. I left his body here with you and Hector, the undertaker. How did his body find its way into the sea? How? You have all my sympathies, senor. I am not looking for sympathy, Don Luis. I want answers. You said you and Hector would take care of whatever arrangements were necessary. Now, what exactly did you mean by that? Well, the, the preparation, naturally, of the remains of your unfortunate husband, the casket, the inquest by the medical examiner, his signature on the death certificate. But there was no inquest. The medical examiner's signature had to be a forgery. Why? There is such a possibility, Senora. But you understand that without that signature... Your husband's body would have been lying around here on this island for days. Whoever signed the certificate had your interests at heart. He was trying somehow to be helpful. Oh, I see. And somehow Hector died. And somehow, by some strange coincidence, his body was placed in the casket intended for my husband. And somehow there seemed to be a great rush about getting the casket off the island and past customs. And somehow my husband's body was tossed into the sea. Now, there has to be some explanation for all this. And no one is better qualified than you, Don Luis, to make it. Senora Lawson, I place my entire life into your hands. What I tell you must be in the strictest confidence. Otherwise, I tell you nothing. I can't promise anything. It'll depend on what you tell me. Very well, Senora. First, putting Hector's body in the wrong casket. A stupid accident on the part of his imbecile of an assistant. He was understandably nervous and excited. Mistakes can happen. This one, unfortunately, did. That seems highly unlikely. What else? 
I, uh, I hesitate to speak. But I think that you, senora, may have a secret or two of your own. As I think your husband did, too. What? Maybe we can exchange our secrets. We make a little trade. What are you talking about? As deputy curator of national antiquities, I have the serious responsibility to see that none of our national treasures ever leaves our country. What's that got to do with me? On occasion, I have managed to get one, maybe two, of these ancient artifacts off the island on my own for sale in the States. I have said it. You see now why I seek your cooperation. Are you telling me that you had the effrontery to hide some of those artifacts in the casket intended for my husband? Maybe so. Maybe not. So cleverly hidden that the customs inspector would never find them? If that were so, it would maybe tell you why I was so anxious to get the casket off the island as quickly as possible. Oh, Don Luis. No customs officer could ever be that stupid. You are no fool yourself, Senora Lawson. You must know that all things have a price. Stupidity is a commodity easily bought and sold. Uh, please do excuse me, Senora. Pronto. See? Si? This is Luis Herrera. Yes? Oh, I see. You're sure? Oh, that is wonderful, fantastic. I will be there as soon as possible. The usual place, of course. I, uh, I must do leave at once, senora. Something is waiting for me on the mainland. At the Emerald Mines. The Emerald Mines? A young boy I know. He has turned up a pair of chibchag gods someplace on the mainland. I see. He wishes to turn them over to me. In my capacity as deputy curator, of course. Oh, I understand. He works at the mines and he has put the guards under a little shed that only, only he and I know about. Don Luis, what's the going price these days for a pair of guards? <laughs> Permit me, senora, to answer your question with a question of my own. What would you say would be the going price for a small partnership, you, senora, and I. That would depend. A partnership in what commodity? Well, certainly not in stupidity. I invite you to come with me, senora. We go to the Emerald Mines. <laughs> The Spanish conquistadors, Jimenez de Casada, came from Spain in 1536 to what is now the Republic of Colombia. His mission? To explore the mythical country of the legendary golden man, El Dorado, a place reputed to be of enormous wealth. A cruel and hard taskmaster, Quesada obtained fabulous amounts of gold, but especially of emeralds from the Ticha Indians all for the treasury of the king of Spain. It is to minds much like those that Quisada knew that Don Louis has now invited Lily Lawson. I'll return shortly with Act Three. The precious green emerald has had a most intriguing history. Both genuine stones, as well as imitations, were held in the highest esteem, for example, in ancient Egypt. One reason for the fascination of emeralds was the fact that their vibrations were supposed to be able to foretell the future. Don Louis has brought Lily Lawson to the emerald mines of his country's mainland. And as they walk down a path... What looks like a high pressure hose against the hillside. Exactly. The spray of the water cuts deep into the dark earth, making a stream of mud and gravel. It then spills over into that box down there. I see. And here, here is where the mud goes from the box to where this old man squats. Good day, El Pidio. Good day, my holy master. Good day, my lord. 
What is he doing? He's sifting the gravel, searching the pebbles, trying to find what is more valuable than gold. Why did the old man call you my holy master, my lord? Oh, he's very old, quite superstitious. It's merely his way of, of showing respect. For you or for the emerald that hangs around your neck? <laughs> Maybe a little of both. The high priests of old were permitted to wear the gem as a symbol of their holiness, their devotion to the gods. Then why do you wear yours, Don Luis? I uh, think we come now to the surprise. The reason we came all the way here, this way, Senora, over here, under this shed. Ah, they are waiting for us. Well, who, who's waiting? I, I see no one. On the table here, these little ones. Oh, how extraordinary. And how beautiful. Two perfectly preserved cheap jug gods in copper. Oh, they are fantastic. And so different from any of the others I've seen. These have eyes. Each eye seems to be a perfect emerald. And a rather large one at that. At least two carats. So? Yes, I think you are right. You, uh... You have some idea of their value in today's market? Not the slightest. One hundred thousand U.S. dollars. Maybe more. For each carat. Then those four eyes would be worth... What? Close to a million dollars? More or less. And... Since they belong, of course, to the state, they'll make what you call your poor country all the richer, all the more independent. Will they not, Don Luis? Oh, Senora Lawson, you are a woman of great understanding. It gets better all the time. Thank you. So, we take these little ones with us and we return to the island. I think you have a few things you must still do, Senora, before your... your final departure from our country. Well, Cesar, all good things must come to an end. This is it. My last walk on this beautiful beach. Now, uh, you'll be back, Lily. I'm almost sure of it. I don't think so. Tomorrow, it will all be in the past. Oh, why don't you leave, too? Not a chance. Not a chance. Well, I'll uh, go with you as far as U.S. Customs and Immigration, only to help with the details of getting your husband's body back into the United States. Uh, and then? Um, you'd better get out of the sun, Lily. All right. Let's get back to the hotel. I have a few last-minute things to do before I finally land my fish. The big one. Mm, Luis Herrera. Uh, how can I help? We've both of us caught this one together, Cesar. But I want to bring him in all by myself. Hook, line, and sinker. Freshen your drink, Senora Lawson. Oh, thank you. I'm fine with what I have. Uh, Don Luis, when you took me into your confidence about smuggling your gold statues into the States, yes. you intimated that you knew a secret or two that concerned me. What do you know, Don Luis? You know very well what I know. And so, may I add, does your young, handsome friend, Cesar? I really loathe playing games. That's for children. Uh, but if you insist, number one, by your own admission, you are guilty of cheating your own country out of its priceless treasures. The statuettes. Like the two you picked up when I was with you at the mines. Mm -hmm. What else? Cesar and I... We know how Hector died. You do? We came through your office door just as you had finished choking him to death. You were in some kind of a trance, chanting something in a strange language. I am listening. And 
It was no mistake that Hector's body was placed in the casket that was intended for my husband. No mistake, huh? Once you'd murdered Hector, you had to dispose of his body some way. My husband's coffin, you thought, was as sure a way as any of covering up what you'd done. Brilliant thinking, senora. When the casket was firmly sealed, you suddenly realized you had an extra body on your hands. My husband's. No point in reopening the casket. A sharp eye might detect the tool marks and so invite awkward questions. So what happens? Far out into the sea goes Mr. Lawson's body. Unfortunately, not far enough. Because the tides played you false, Don Luis. His body was washed back to shore much sooner than you or anyone else could anticipate. I think, senora, you will never get the chance to tell anyone else what you have just told me. Stay right where you are. Don't move. Because I'm not quite finished. From my husband's research, I know that none of the statuettes of your ancient gods was blind. Hmm? None of them. They all of them once had eyes. Like the ones you showed me today. The sockets once held eyes of the purest of emeralds. What happened to those eyes, Don Luis? I, uh, I think you know, senora. Curious thing. The day you accidentally broke that little clay pot in the museum, do you remember? Yes. You started to say to me something very interesting. Something about... Three little statues your husband had examined? I have no recollection of any such thing. That's a pity. It no longer matters, senora. Because the time has now come for you to listen to me. I don't want you to hear... You will listen. This emerald I wear about my neck. I am the direct descendant of countless generations of high priests of the Chipchas. It is why the Indians here bow low to me, why they call me Holy Master. They know. They know I have powers beyond those of any ordinary man. That I hold the hand of life and death over each one of them. What are you going to do? Your tongue is much too busy, Senora. I will still that tongue of yours forever. You are aware that Cesar knows everything I know. Everything. If you want silence... You'll have to kill both of us. I am no murderer. I am Lenka. Out of a forgotten past, Lenka. The high priest of my people, ruler of my tribe. Lenka will do as his gods tell him. But first, he must celebrate the rites of his ancestors. For the moment, you may do as you wish, senora, but not for long. Not long at all. Cesar, I don't like those dark clouds over there. Uh, neither do I. This time of year, these sudden storms come up down here. Usually they end as quickly as they start. This one will probably pass. Well, I certainly hope you're right. Try to relax. Once we're around the next bend, we'll be at Lake Sagrado, the sacred lake, and then in no time we'll be on my boat headed for the mainland. I hope so. The casket's been sealed, the papers are all in order, we're in fine shape. In a couple of hours, you'll be back in the States. It's getting darker every minute. Says I? Look! Where? There, in the middle of the lake. Well, what is that? In that dugout canoe, isn't that Don Luis? certainly is. His entire body is painted in gold. He's got to come into shore. That canoe of his... Any minute now. No. No, the wind has overturned the canoe. He, he's been tossed into the water. That's the deepest part of the lake. He can't swim. He told us. He's going to drown. Don Luis. Don Luis. Try to come this way. This way. He's gone under... Disappeared under the waters of the lake. Yeah, Bo. 
both U.S. citizens? Yes, yes, we are. You have nothing to declare? Nothing. Well, then you're both cleared, except for one thing, ma'am. The body of your late husband. We opened the casket regulations. Uh, and? We, uh, we have reason to suspect something not quite regular. Oh, I... I think I know what you mean. You found some precious artifacts, little statuettes hidden in a secret place in the coffin. I can explain that. And I can prove that I had nothing to do with putting them there. There's not a thing. The rights are that? Yeah, but nothing was found in the casket other than your husband's body. Then what are you talking about? I think you better take over, Officer Mendoza. Thank you. Officer Mendoza? You? Sir. Officer in the U.S. Department of Justice. I'm sorry, Lily. Uh, Mrs. Lawson, you and your husband were my assignment. Assignment? You miserable little... I'm afraid you're under arrest, Mrs. Lawson. For what? I wish I could say for the murder of your husband. You're out of your mind. I was there when it happened. Your husband called for help that day on the boat. You could have saved his life. Instead, you deliberately tossed the pills that might have kept him alive into the sea. I saw that. Even if that were true. It is true. Unfortunately, it wouldn't stand up in most courts of law. Then why have you put me under arrest? For the transportation of stolen goods into the United States, commonly known as smuggling. But the officer here has just said that there was none of those little gods in the casket. I know that, too. May I have your shoulder bag, please? My bag has only personal things. Your bag, please, Mrs. Lawson. (sighs) Thank you. Mm. So there. You see? Nothing. Except personal articles. Including these half dozen tubes of suntan cream. What of it? Have you a penknife, officer? Thank you. Now, watch this, Mrs. Lawson. I split this tube right down the length of it. And what do I see peering out of the cream? One of the most beautiful emeralds anyone has ever seen. An emerald that was pried by you and your husband out of the head of one of the Chibcha guards you picked up someplace. The same thing our friend Don Luis was doing. And every one of these six tubes contains a similar stone... Way over a million dollars worth. This is absolutely ridiculous. I was taught as a fisherman to give a fish as much line as he or she needs. And then at the right moment to bring it in very carefully. Who first beholds the light of day in spring's sweet flowering month of May. And wears an emerald all her life. She'll be a loved and happy wife. As Officer Cesar Mendoza leads Mrs. Lily Lawson away with her stolen emeralds, you can be sure that the lady was born in some month other than May. I'll be back shortly. story a pair of green eyes we introduced you to an island in the Atlantic rich in precious emeralds but many of us have always thought of the Emerald Isle as a sacred place in another part of the Atlantic an island clothed in mystery bathed in natural beauty a place described by the earliest bards as an emerald gem set in a silver sea the place known to us all as Ireland We want to caution you that these two Atlantic islands, the one where our story took place and the other one, the island of Erin, are under no circumstances to be confused. Our cast included Terry Keane, Arnold Moss, Russell Horton, and Bob Callaghan. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I get it. I bought it. You bought this? You want to see the papers? I can't get over it. Hop in. Oh, I've never been in one of these in my life. 
Now, where would you like to go? Go, I don't care. But we'll head for the throughway, where I can really let her out. We'll turn here and take the tunnel. Hey, there's somebody walking up ahead. Walking? Yes, walking. Oh, who'd be walking in the tunnel? He'd have to be crazy. Yes. It's Richard. Richard? Can't you recognize him? You're right. It is Richard. And we better stop and pick him up. No, no. I've got a better idea. What? Let's kill him. This is Tommy Grimes inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.